one of the one of the major themes of this chapter. Uh, it's in the title. It's um, it's basically this chapter is called biomes and biodiversity. Uh, one of the major themes, then, of course, is biodiversity, the number of different species in an area. And um, we've reached a point, we had talked about bio, uh, the biomes, and now we're talking about marine environments. And we have two, two locations, one's a biome, and another is this near shore environment I'm going to talk about. The two highest biodiverse diversity environments, the two environments with the highest level of biodiversity, the, the most number of different species, are tropical rainforest and coral reefs. These two environments, coral reefs and tropical rainforest. So when we, so, so these are very important. And so we have, um, I think it's four different near shore water environments that we're going to specifically talk about. And the first of these is going to be the coral reef environments. Uh, they're beautiful, right? You've all seen on TV um, uh, scuba divers swimming with all the colorful fish, and they're just this huge multitude of different kinds of fish. That's the biodiversity we're talking about. And, you know, the corals and the, all of the, the incredible diversity of life that is there. Well, it ends up that this is one of the most highly threatened environments in the world. And, and as a matter of fact, so is the tropical rainforest. Tropical rainforests are being cleared um, to make pasture. And we had already said that's a really bad idea since there is uh, very little nutrients in the soil. Well, here, it's not, it's not really that um, that is the problem. The problem is... Uh, um, rising temperature, global warming. It ends up corals are right at the top of their tolerance limit for temperature. Now, why is that? It's because they are a, a, a involved in a mutualistic relationship with the type of algae that is called zooanthellae. Zooanthellae. I can never remember how to, how to spell it. I had to look it up. Zooxanthellae lives inside of it. Now, if you remember, a mutualist means that it's a symbiotic relationship. Two organisms that are have their lives closely connected together, and with the mutualist, they they both benefit, and they can't survive without the other one. So it ends up with the corals. The as sea levels rise, it kills. Their mutualist, the zooxanthellae, and I have a really interesting video you should watch. Now listen carefully. It's uh, from Australia. Now remember, of course, the the Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef in the world, and it's off the coast of coral of Australia. So that's why they are one of the leaders in this research. But what they're finding is that the coral reefs are dying, and it's a process called coral bleaching. So if you think of plants are green because they have to absorb uh, light. Um, so if you lose the, the zooxanthellae, they no longer are green, and the corals die. The corals starve to death because they, they get nutrients from their mutualist zooxanthellae. Saying that one, uh, we're going to talk about some other nearshore environments in addition to the coral reefs that are very important for life on Earth.